Texas A&M safety Jacoby Matthews plans to hit the portal when it opens. It's a tough loss, but Texas A&M is still stacked at this position. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. So, over the weekend, we were hit with news that Texas A&M safety, Jacoby Matthews, plans to enter the portal when it opens. Now, you know, of course, that's not for a little while until the portal opens. And, you know, I saw mixed emotions on Twitter slash X. I saw a lot of folks, you know, kind of the sky is falling, which is fair. I saw a lot of folks kind of, you know, hey, we're good. We have a ton of depth there. We're going to be fine. You know, I've had a lot of time to think on this. And I think I lie in the middle on this, on, on this topic. Um, listen, Jacob Matthews is a good football player. Last year, he has a PFF grade of 72.7 in 510 snaps, eight, an 80.8 coverage grade. Um, he had 42 tackles, a half sack, an interception, and four pass breakups. So, I mean, you know, for a guy who didn't play every single snap, he put up some solid numbers. And, um, you know, he's a player that you would have loved to have competing for the job, whether he starts, whether he's in the two deep, whatever it is. He's a player you would have liked to have on your roster for next season. But Texas A&M, Coach Elko did an incredible job at this position in the transfer portal. And you got a couple talented young players coming in. So I guess what I'm getting at here is y'all know how much I harp on depth. I love depth. I love having a ton of players on. Um, I love having a ton of players on a roster. I love having enough depth at each position, enough players that, hey, if this guy goes down, this guy can play. This guy can play. So losing Jacoby Matthews for that, you know, hurts. I think he is an incredible depth piece. I think he's a really good football player. Um, I think he, wherever he, when, when he does put his name in the portal when it opens and he goes to find his new home, I think he's going to make a new football program very, very happy. But, you know, I, I do think, you know, he had, he had a bunch of upside. I do think this. I know I haven't heard the why on him leaving yet. Was it you know there was just a lot of competition in the room? He wanted to go somewhere with some. He wants to go somewhere with some guaranteed playing time. What is it that led to Jacoby Matthews hitting the portal? It has been a little bit interesting to me, especially because I mean there's nowhere he can go yet. So, and like I don't, I, you can't. I don't think you can, even if you say, hey, I'm going to go in the portal. I still don't think you can talk to teams until you're in the portal. Uh, Well, but we all know, you know, the tampering and all that. But, I mean, still, we don't – I don't know how that goes as a player, but you have to assume that he can't talk to schools until he's officially in the portal. So it's like, why why not go through spring, you know, or uh, see what happens? I don't know. I just think – you know, and and there's going to be a lot of people in the comments that you know, and and I get it. You know, the whole uh, you know he's a quitter, let him go, that kind of stuff. I get that. I see that in the comments all the time. But um, I just think in this new world of college football, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, it's just the reality. You know, I think this is just what college football is now, and um, you know, players are going to go where they where they think it's the best opportunity for them to. Uh, you know, cr- uh, create a, a, a career play in this game. So i um, not saying I agree with the new world of college football, but I'm saying it's, it's just, it's reality. It's just what the, this sport is now like it or not. Um, 
And I think Matthews wants to go find a place that he feels is a better fit for him when it comes to maybe get himself to the next level. So um, it'll be a little bit interesting to see where he gets up. And I'm pretty sure I saw this on Twitter. Um, and let me know if I'm wrong on this, but I saw someone say that he can't, because of when he's hitting the portal, he can't transfer within the SEC. So he's got to go to another conference. Um, let me know on that. Um, I'll double check on that and leave it in the comments. But I mean, it's just a weird. This is this is a weird one to me. Now you're going to have more players hit the portal after spring. You know, a lot of players like to stay where they are, um, get a feeling for for where for you know get a feeling for are that where they where they're at on the depth chart. Am I able to get into the to the rotation? Am I able to get some playing time? You know, a lot of players I think kind of feel out their situation before making a decision. So. Um, Matthews will not be the last player to enter his name in the portal. That's just once again, that's just kind of how this works now. But um, you know, Texas A&M's got to got to make sure they have the right amount of scholarships, and then maybe if a handful of players leave, you can go get somebody else in the portal. Um, and I talked about this weeks and weeks ago, but like the spring window is going to give the coaching staff an opportunity to see this roster and say, "Ooh, you know what? We could really use a tackle. We could really use another linebacker." You know, and, and it's going to give them that opportunity. And we'll see that in the spring game. We'll see that in all this stuff. So, um, you know, we're going to learn a lot about this football team over the next month. You know, we're going to learn a lot about this team. So it'll be interesting to see why Matthews left. Is he just looking for more playing time? Does he want to go to a, a more secure place? Well, you know, I haven't heard a why. I've just heard, a, you know, what's going on. So, um, but then once again, I mean, let's go through this room. In this In this room, you still have... Bryce Anderson, you got the transfer Trey Jones, the transfer to Ricky Wright, the transfer Marcus Ratcliffe, you got Dalton Brooks, you got Jared Kerr, you got Jordan Pride, and you got Miles Davis. I mean, you still got plenty of talent in this room. Um, I think you've got plenty of players that can play multiple positions in the secondary. Um, some players that I'd be interested to see try and play multiple positions in the secondary. But, I mean, this is just an all-around loaded position. I feel good about all the transfers. I feel good about Bryce Anderson. Uh, you know, the young guys, Jordan Pride, Miles Davis, are going to be great now. Is it going to be this season? I'm not saying that. But I do feel good about them and, and their future when it comes to, you know, playing um, at Texas A&M. But, I mean, these are veteran guys. Trey Jones, Ricky Wright, the transfers. Uh, I mean, they've played some some serious football. So, I think that's a good thing. I think you bring in experience. So now you have a mix of experience. You have a mix of young guys. You have a mix of some guys who have been on the roster. Um, a talented guy with a ton of upside in Bryce Anderson. So, you know, I'd be crazy to sit here and say, oh, we'll lose Matthews is no big deal. Who cares? He's not, you know, he, he's, he, he had a good numbers last year, ton of upside. So losing a player like him hurts. It does. It hurts the depth. It hurts. The you know, I mean, he could have, he was fighting. He was going to fight for a starting position. It does hurt your roster. It makes your roster not as good. But to sit here and say that Texas A&M is, well, there you go. We're winning four games. Is, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, um, the sky isn't going to come falling down. It, the reality here is that you just, you're losing a player that was going to fight for a starting role and, and was depth. So, yes, it, this hurts as a bad loss, but they're going to happen. You're going to lose more guys. It's going to happen. Players are going to leave in, in this after the spring it, when the next portal window opens um, in the summer because that's just the new world of college football. So it'll be interesting to see who decides to follow Matthews here in a few weeks, a few months, um, who's going to leave. And then if enough players leave, does Texas A&M go pursue anybody in the portal? That will all be interesting um, to see how what you know what does Coach Elko and his staff feel that they need? Do they go get a ton more? How are they going to kind of handle that situation is going to be a fun, you know, topic in the next coming months. So that's something to monitor. Um, this was a bit weird, just the timing of it, all of it. I mean, you know, it, but um, best of luck to Matthews, wherever he ends up. And he's going to be a good player somewhere. Uh, but, yeah, that room's loaded. You're losing a good player, but that room's loaded. Um, young players, veterans, ton of upside in that room. So losing Matthews hurts. Losing Matthews hurts. But you still got, you're still in a good spot there, in my opinion. So the baseball team absolutely steamrolls Wagner. We're going to talk about this three game sweep coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. 
But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. All of your favorite NBA players and teams, you can bet on them. Quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and a ton more. The FanDuel app is easy to use. It's fun to use. It's my favorite place to go and do all of my sports um, betting. Uh, I mean, in all the sport, you know, right now, NFL is over, college football is over, but you've still got college basketball. You've got college baseball. I told you I had a college baseball parlay the other day. Um, NBA, MLB is on its way back. We've got spring training games. A lot of exciting stuff that you can bet on over at FanDuel. And when baseball's back, there'll be even more stuff to bet on. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA and the Locked On Podcast Network. So the baseball team wins game one, 17-2. Game two, 2-0 two, in a very interesting game where Texas A&M scored two runs in like – right out of the gate and didn't score again. It was just a pitcher's tool, which is a little interesting, especially knowing how the other two games went because in game three, you win 21, two and seven innings. So um, it's a little funny that game two is like a, you know, eight inning pitcher's duel after a couple runs and, um, you know, but you still find a way to absolutely, you know, hammer them in the other two games. But um, so that's a run differential of four, well, I mean, uh, you know, a 40 to four. In, in three baseball games. Now, I want to add something, okay? Is Wagner going to be competing to play in Omaha? No, they're not. That's just the reality here, okay? They are not. But this is a Division I baseball team, ladies and gentlemen. I always reiterate this. This is a lot different to me than, a, you know, than playing um, a Division One, you know, a, a small Division One team in – basketball or football it's it's different because baseball is just there's talent everywhere i always say there's talent in every level of college baseball d2 d3 naia every level of college baseball there's talent um enough talent i mean i've seen d2 schools that can compete with d1 schools um at at the juco i played at we almost beat a d1 school like i mean like you know we had them and i think lost it in the ninth but you know i mean like D2, D3, what point is here, there's talent all over college baseball, especially at the Division I level. Any Division I school on any given night, and we've seen this all over, even in the SEC teams are losing to teams that you don't think they should be. But Texas A&M is steamrolling these teams. I mean, once again, a 42-4 run differential in three games. That is absurd. I mean, that is really, really crazy. Um, and that's not only is that, uh, you know, a tip of the cap to the hitters, it's a tip of the cap to the pitchers. Four runs in, in, in three baseball games is really, really impressive. So game one, 13 hits, um, 11 walks, five strikeouts. So only uh, hitters only strike out five times. We will take that all day long. 11 walks. We'll take that. Once again, I mean, you know, get – find a way to get on base I mean, we'll we'll take that i want to pull up the numbers um on some hitter stats i've got some things but um and then the hitters in this game the, the i mean the pitchers in this game they struck out 13 only two walks to hit by pitches as i always say if you can keep the free bases to five, four, three, less. Just don't have it be a number where you look back at a game and it's like, oh, man, like we walked seven guys and hit three. I mean, you you don't want games like that. Keep those to a minimum, and we can always live with that. Uh, so that was game one. Game two, where, you know, it's more interesting. This is the, I find this interesting, too. Texas A&M, in, in, in the two-run game, only struck out four times. So what does that mean? They're putting ball in play. You know what I mean? And and I like that. I mean, th- there's going to be games where sometimes they don't fall. You Maybe you're hitting lasers, and they're just not falling. That's just the reality of baseball. It doesn't always fall your way. So 
you know, in games like that, your pitchers got to pick you up. And what did Texas A&M's pitchers do? They did exactly that. The pitchers had 12 strikeouts, only two base on balls. Um, I mean, you just you love that. I, I love a baseball game like that, in all honesty, because here's the deal. It puts pressure on the pitching staff. You know, you've got some tough games coming up, which we'll talk about here in a minute. When you're winning games 17-2 to and 21-2, to there's no pressure on your pitching staff. Pressure on your pitching staff is a very helpful thing when you're playing Arizona State and USC and Texas. This is, you know, and then, of course, SEC teams. This is the stuff that matters. Um, so it's a good thing. Your, your pitchers had to throw. Every inning they threw was a, was a high-pressure inning because of the score. Uh, so, I mean, you'll take that. Now, once again, I would love – the, well, here's the deal. Finding a way to win a close baseball game helps too. So there's going to be games where your hitters pick up your pitchers and your pitchers pick up your hitters. This was a game where your pitchers picked up your hitters. They, the the uh, offense puts two runs up on the board. The, def, uh, the pitching staff allows zero runs to go up on the board. That's an incredible baseball game all around. Love a game like that. It's, I, I enjoy watching a game like that. I know some might not. Um, but, you know – We'll take that. We will take that. Uh, Texas Tech had eight hits, left eight on base in this game. And then game three, 15 hits, only struck out four times. So do the math on that. That is eight, 19, 11, 12, 13. 13 total strikeouts on the weekend. You will take that all day long. I mean, really, that's – I mean, what's the math on that? I don't know if three – Um. 13 divided by – yeah, about four strikeouts a game. I mean, you'll 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 take that. You know, if you are putting the ball in play, it's a baseball cliche, but if you are putting the baseball in play, making the defense work, good things happen. It's college baseball. Opponents make errors, errors lead to runs, and you don't care if they come off base hits, off homers, off a booted ball by the third baseman. You will take it all day long, put the baseball in play, and good things will happen. So those were kind of the numbers from the three wins. Um, so this is interesting. You have where we sit right now, you have eight hitters that have had 10 plus at bats batting 300 or better. So Braden Montgomery batting uh, 423. He's got 11 hits on 26 at bats, two doubles, a triple, three bombs, 12 RBIs. Um, I mean, I mean, like every, I mean, <laughs> Camarillo batting 409. Jace Lavalette still hitting 385. No bombs on the weekend for Lavalette, which is really depressing. I mean, you know, he's got to get better. I mean, I don't care if he hits 500 in the weekend, 600 in a weekend. If he's not hitting homers, you know, what's he good for? I'm just kidding. Um, that's just a joke because he hit five homers in the first couple of games. But I mean, really, I mean, the point here is every, line up top to bottom. Guys coming off the bench, everybody that plays for this team can hit. Um, and that's just that's just great to see. So, you know, seeing that you've got a team that really can hit the baseball top to bottom, it's not just the to, uh, top of your order. It's not. I love a lineup that one through nine, everybody can do damage. And that is the reality for this Texas a and baseball team. The, I mean, once again, Ladies and gentlemen, don't let anybody convince you that you shouldn't be excited about this team. Every time I watch this team play, I am just more and more convinced that they can win the national championship. Seriously, that's how good this team is. Now, like I said, you've got two games coming up against Arizona State. you got a game against USC, and then after that, a game against Texas. You've got one game against Lamar in the midweek before those upcoming four games. So you're going to find out a lot about this team in those games. If you can go 3-1, and one, We'll take that all day long. You go three and one. You beat Lamar. You go four and one in your next five. We're feel, feeling really good with with um, SEC play starting to inch a little bit closer. So um, you love that. You really do love the way this is shaping up for the Aggies. This baseball team can play, and this baseball team can win the SEC and can win the national championship. I mean, I, I just I, I've just got a feeling this team's going to Omaha. I feel really good about it. Just how good they are. Now we're going to have to talk about once again, it feels like every time we make the transition from baseball to basketball, it's a little bit sad. And that's going to be the reality today as we talk about Texas A&M's blowout loss um, in Knoxville to the Tennessee Volunteers. We'll talk about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies.
Yep, Texas A&M is blown out in Knoxville, 86-51, in a game where you'd love to have had it when it comes to making the NCAA tournament. I mean, you are now – you have to go – worst case scenario, 3-1 and one in your next four games to make the NCAA tournament. And, and, and if you did that, you would need help. Now, once again, if you do, if you do win out, you will make the tournament. If you win out, you go 10 and 8 in conference, you'll make the tournament. If you go 3 and 1, you're leaving it in the hands of some other teams on the bubble. If you go 2 and 2, you're done. It's very simple. Um, Texas A&M can win all four of the games they have left. Texas A&M can lose all four of the games they have left. And it's pretty plain and simple. You host South Carolina, who I'm um, going to be interesting to see where they're ranked. What did they do this week? Did they go 2-0 this week? Let me pull up what they did this week. Yep, they – oh, no. Oh, yes. No, they had they had a, a midweek bye, and then they beat Ole Miss on the road on Saturday. So they, they went 1-0 this week. Um, so you assume they'll stay or move up in the rankings. They were at 20, so they'll probably, you know, move up a spot, stay there. Um, you host South Carolina. You go to Georgia. You host Mississippi State. You go to Ole Miss. As I said, all four of those games are winnable, and all four of those games are losable. It, it, it's just up to this team now. I mean, listen, you know, no, one thing I'll say. So, I mean, let's go through the numbers first from this Tennessee game. As much as I want to just throw it in the trash can and forget it occurred. Um, you shoot 27.3% from the field, 20% from three. You're 8 of 15 from the free throw line, 53%. You're um, – Carter, Taylor, and Boots combine 11 for uh, 11 to 40, 11 for 40 from the field, 28 percent. You know when you're when you're you know guys that score the basketball do that, you're not going to win games. You're just you, you're, that's just three out. You're not going to win a lot of basketball games when your best guys are putting up numbers like that. It's just the sad reality of this team. So, um, I mean, like I said, you have to find a way to win three of these games to have a chance. Four gets you in, three gives you a chance. Anything less, I think you're you're done. So, I mean, the reality here, I think what's most frustrating about this season for Texas A&M fans is the fact that this team was projected. Some folks had them as the, the best team in the SEC. Some folks had them as, you know, a, a second, third, fourth. You know, we've seen them all over pretty much in the top five. And it, people believed in this Texas A&M team. People believed in Wade Taylor and the veteran leadership of Boots and the older guys and, and frankly, Coach Buzz Williams. And this season didn't pan out the way many many would would, of course anyone would have hoped. I mean, you know, you were supposed to be competing for the SEC this year, not sitting at the bottom. You know, I mean, near the bottom, really. I mean, that's not what the season was supposed to be. So, I mean, thoughts on on Buzz? I've seen a lot of people frustrated now. I'll be honest with you. I am not quite there yet. I think that basketball teams sometimes can just – here's the deal. I, I think the reason it's different from football is, you know, you're not you, – in football, you've got a million players on the team and you got all this different – you know, I mean, there's – if somebody's not playing well, you got five guys behind them. In basketball, I mean, heck, you got like 11 guys, 10, whatever, 10 guys on the team, 12 guys on the team. So – if a handful of the guys don't pan out to be what you thought, you're just – that's just – you're in trouble. I mean, that's just the reality here. So, um, I, 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 I'm not – I'm not like crazy mad at Buzz or anything just simply because the reality here is sometimes basketball teams just don't pan out to be what you expected them to be, what you recruited them to be. That just happens. And I think that's kind of what has just happened here. I don't think this team, you know, when you recruit a team, you recruit players to fit different roles. You have a vision for the roster, a vision for the team. And I think whatever uh, Buzz had for that, whatever the vision he had for this team, it just didn't really come to fruition, you know, for lack of better. I mean, I I just, I don't think it, it panned out the way he expected it to. So, um, You know, it'll be – I'm not starting the fire buzz 
you know, because I don't, I don't think, I think that, I mean, look what's going on with Musselman over in Arkansas. I mean, they, they've had a, they were projected, they were a top 15 team, you know, like just they were ranked like Texas A&M was preseason and they've been borderline. Well, I mean, I, I know they swept us, but they've been bad, you know, everywhere else. So, um, you know, I, I think that sometimes you just, here's the deal. Bad seasons are going to happen. You cross it off and you move on. Now, a team like Texas A&M does that. I mean, or a team like Arkansas does that, and and it's not as big of a deal because they've had so much success in the postseason. But when you kind of do it back to back years, that's when it becomes a problem. So if Texas A and M stacks this, if they do this in back to back seasons, that is when you can have a conversation. But I mean, I just don't think Buzz is going to let that happen. I think he's going to go hit the portal and figure some stuff out, and and really turn this around. But what's been so funny about this team is how they've been pretty solid in quad one games, but then like quad three games, they just can't win them. It's just the weirdest thing about this team and the way it's panned out. So, um, I mean, yes, you're welcome to be frustrated about this team. There's no question there. I mean, this team really is going to have to fight to even make the NCAA tournament, which is not something that I think anyone would have expected heading into the season, but they can, they can still do that if they go four and zero. They're in. If they go three and one, they have a shot. Tough games can be tough to do that, but I mean, you're still going to have the opportunity and the chance to do that. So, I mean, once again, don't be. I don't think people should start the whole fire buzz thing. I just don't think you're there yet. I think that you need to hope that Buzz is better. Um, I think that you need to hope that he does a better job in the portal next time. I, I think that you know he could have really. I think you could have done a better job in the portal. And I think that's just the reality here. I think you've got to get a more offensive minded team. I just, you know, um, I think Wade hasn't had the year everyone hoped or imagined. Um, and, and Radford's had a lot of good games and a lot of games like this. So um, once again, I think you just, this is a season. If they don't make the tournament, you just forget about it, forget it occurred and move on. I still believe in, in buzz. Some might, but let me, let me know that in the comments. Let me know that in the comments. Do y'all still believe in buzz? Do y'all still think he can, be a great coach at Texas A&M, and do you believe in the future and, and what he's planning for the Aggies? That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. I really do appreciate it. Those listening on audio, we had a switch up of, of um, who we used our provider for putting up on audio, so the show is going to have to come out a little bit later than normal. Um, on YouTube, we have normal time, um, normal time, but on on um, audio, it's going to be a little bit later, So and that, that's just a one-time thing, so sorry about that. Uh, but back to normal tomorrow, up early, you know, um, seven in the morning. But once again, that's going to do it for today's show. I hope everybody has an amazing rest of your day today, and we will see you next time.